Hello, my name is Father Lynn McMillan, and welcome to Exploring Catholicism. Hello, I am Father Len McMillan. I'm the pastor of St. Pius, and this is meal number six. Now, I have to tell you, this is my favorite meal. Meal number six is the Sabbath meal with the Pharisee. And in meal number six, it's a great meal because it's when the Pharisees get really upset with Jesus because he has this same problem of welcoming sinners as quote-unquote old friends. And now he's at the house of the leading Pharisee. And meal number six raises the question, is religion going to be a special gathering for people who are all alike? Or is it going to be this force of hospitality? And I always remember one of the reasons why Dorothy Day became Catholic is that she walks into the church and she sees all these people of great variety. I mean, her name is Universal all these different ethnic groups and the poor sitting next to the rich. And she thought to herself, this is what the kingdom of God has to look like. That is meal number six. And it starts with this appetizer story. So, uh, and the appetizer is a story, the parable of the mustard seed. Well, the mustard seed is very, very small, but the mustard plant was actually a weed. So it was unwanted but it was also used in healing remedies. And Jesus says in the parable, this mustard weed becomes this great tree that shelters all the birds. The birds are the Gentiles and the unwanted. And it's this image that our church is supposed to be this huge sheltering tree. It doesn't exist for itself. It exists to offer shelter for other people. Then he follows it up with a parable, another appetizer about the kingdom of God is like a woman who puts yeast in three measures of flour, which should recall to you the story of Sarah and Abraham. Sarah makes bread three measures of flour, and that's 50 pounds of bread she made for three complete strangers. They are the patron saints of hospitality. Um, religion starts with Abraham and Sarah, so religion is about offering hospitality to people outside your clan, your group. Religion doesn't exist for itself. Um, it exists to offer healing. And so at the house of the Pharisee, uh, it starts with this healing story where Jesus heals on the Sabbath. Um, and the Pharisees, they think the meal is about giving them honor. The Pharisees think religion is celebrating their salvation and their honor. And Jesus' point with the healing is that no, religion offers healing to the world. So then he tells this parable, and this is a great one, about the great invitation, where God sends out invitations to everyone. But the first people invited, that they're taken up with their own agenda, so they never really answer the call. And then God says, I want my house filled for my supper and sends out messengers on the highways and byways. I want everybody invited. And so when they criticize, you eat with sinners, you eat with these undesirables, Christ's point is, yes, because that's the nature of God. God wants everybody there. And when they get upset and say, well, you eat with the wrong type of people, um, Jesus says to the people, no, when you hold a dinner, you invite the poor, the lame, and the blind because they can't repay you. That's what true hospitality does. Um, God wants to welcome all these people. And so at that point, one of the sinners, they cry out, blessed is the one who dines with you in the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who eat with you in the kingdom of God. They're so happy that they have an invitation. And at this point, at meal number six, the Pharisees decide, oh, we've got to kill him. He welcomes people too much. 
And his response is all these parables. Now, the point of all these parables is that is who God is. God loves to welcome other people. You have the parable of the woman who loses a penny and cleans her whole house. And when she finds that penny, she's so overthrilled. She throws a party for finding a penny. She's crazy, but that's what God is like. God can't help but throw a party. He's so thrilled to find what was lost. Or then you have the story of the shepherd and the lost sheep. um, Who He's crazy. He leaves the 99 and goes after the one. The problem with the Pharisees is that they don't understand who God is. God loves to welcome people. And then you have the story of the father who lost two sons, or sometimes known as the prodigal son. But it's really not about the younger son who says to his father, you're dead, I just want your money, and then goes off. But then he returns, and when the father sees his son returning, he's so overwhelmed, he runs out and collapses hanging himself around his neck. He's so happy to have a son back. But then the older son, he can't stand it. That this other son who had messed up his life is welcome back. So he refuses to come into the house, which for a child to refuse to come into the ancestral home is a way of saying to your parents, you are dead to me. You are cut off. So in a way, The older son is committing the same sin as the younger son. He just doesn't know it. And his defense is, but I followed all the rules. And the father's house is actually heaven. And the older son is the Pharisee. And it ends on this scary question. Well, will the older son come back into the house? Because the father does the same thing. He runs out to the older brother and begs him to come in. And... The older brother's position is, but I've, I'm the good one. I followed all the rules and regulations. And so the shock is you don't understand who the father is. That the older son, the Pharisee, who thinks they're so religious, they may find themselves not part of heaven because their view of religion is about I deserve it. And it just is a shocking end that, wow, um, Maybe the people who claim to be so religious just won't get what heaven is about. They won't want to be part of heaven. So you have three lost and found parables, and then you have the surprise parables. And the surprise parables are, you know, those people who think that they're so religious, surprise, they're not going to make it to heaven. And the ones who you think are so unreligious, surprise, they're going to be in heaven. And so... It's this meal number six is always this kind of surprise. And the point is, um, wow, what is the point of religion? And Jesus in the parable, what he's saying is, oh, you don't like those people over there and these people over here. Then you won't want to be part of the great feast of heaven. You yourself will be locked out. So does your sense of religion, does it welcome other people or like a Pharisee, Do you think that you're so much better that you will lock yourself out of heaven? That's meal number six. So for our parish here, I hope we're people who like God the Father. We rejoice when people come in. We want God's house filled for his supper. We welcome people. God bless. If you like today's topic, please consider joining us a Tuesday morning in the great room following daily mass. God bless.